Morning everybody. People are in shape, there's still some left outside. I think uh, the news spread. It's great to see so many people here this morning and you're very welcome uh, to our summer series. Today we're talking about endurance. And actually if you've been watching the Olympics you'll hopefully know what that word endurance means and what it means just for us uh, as Christians and as a church. Uh, all the announcements, the things that are happening are on on the screen now or you can just scan that little magic box and tell you what's on during the summer and ironically it's really all fitness things that are still running but uh, the movement the flexibility class started on friday great crowd all right already i like this kind of exercise where you can sit in your seat but do not be deceived because i did see beads of sweat uh, so i would say it, it, there's a wee bit of energy uh, that, that's expelled during that, but please, Sherry is brilliant, okay? If, if you haven't been yet, please pop along, it's just drop in, uh, uh, pay your money, and uh, you can uh, have a bit of exercise and fun. So that's that, and said everything else is running as normal. Can I just ask the best people who are here from the select best street, if you can just remain very quickly, literally, and set for just, it's literally two minutes, it's just to approve just something we need to prove before uh, it goes ahead. So as members of the vestry, just hang about here and we'll very quickly get that order of business done and out of the way. The other thing I want to talk quickly about before we start to worship together, I know sometimes our announcements go on a wee bit, but most of you will know that we're going off on sabbatical uh, just for a number of weeks. Ryan will be ordained on the 1st of September, okay, at 7 p.m. in the next few days. But as a consequence of me going off, Ryan is having to take up a, a, a lot of my responsibilities and work. So this is an appeal, okay? Actually, some people said you don't do much anyway, but apart from that. Um, anyway, on Fridays, uh, we have a great youth club, a very vibrant youth club on Friday nights from half past six, which Ryan runs as well. And we're sort of looking just for those weeks that I'm away, just to take the pressure off, okay? Um, so that's on Friday night. So if you feel you can do that, please uh, speak to me or Ryan after the service. It would be greatly uh, appreciated. And you'll hear from Ryan and Sarah uh, in, in just a moment. You didn't know that, Sarah, did you? Oh, that's all right, she did. Uh, you're, you're going to hear from them this in a couple of weeks time. But uh, it's just it's just for Ryan and Sarah, uh, they made it successfully back. Ryan was away with seven girls, so I should Sarah and that, and he survived. So his beard fell out, his hair fell out, but apart from that, he survived. So that was great. Okay, we're going to be still for a moment, and then I want to begin uh, with uh, this prayer for today. And living God, whose Son Jesus fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us with your true and living bread. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
part of our Bible readings for today, which we had at our half nine service, included Psalm 21, or 51, and it's a psalm of, uh, of, of, of King David. But there's a couple of words in that, and it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And, and really, it, it's a cry from our hearts to let God have complete control of our lives. And we do that every Sunday here in Bali Lesson with, with, with a prayer. Sometimes the prayer changes, and we're going to do that now as we come to worship God, as we ask Him for forgiveness, perhaps for anything that we have done wrong. If you'd have heard me yesterday in the car when I tried to get to the Royal Hospital, for what was said <laughs> and for what I wanted to do, but I had a collar on, so I had to be very careful. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it, it's, it's just good just to think about who God is and what he can do for each one of us. And so we're going to take a moment of stillness and silence, and then we're going to pray uh, these words together. And so we pray, most merciful God, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as our being. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life everlasting. Theme is endurance. Anybody remember what last week's theme was? Began with an end. Had to do with sustenance and being fed. Was anybody here last week? Nourishment. nourishment. Okay, so we talked about nourishment last week, and this week we are going to talk about endurance. And on that theme, I'm going to ask Ryan. Ryan and Sarah. Ryan and Sarah have done a great job of putting out. Well, Sarah, you've done a great job of putting. And Ryan, Ryan did a couple as well. That's good. So, some. and some of the girls are here this morning as well. But you did a little great thing on WhatsApp, and you asked the girls to put it out. And we're going to ask the girls in a couple of weeks' time to do and what was encouraging. That's a lovely picture. Yeah, so we, we uh, have returned from Hungary a week ago. Uh, we, uh, we had a really good time. Um, I'm still recovering, uh, both from, from the food and the amount of food uh, that we ate um, from the long days of with seven girls. Uh, I am still recovering from this. Um, for the beginning, we, we had talked about, uh, and, and if you don't know, the this is the feast, uh, the getting to go and do. The, the, the trip started back in February when we would meet as a team every Sunday and gather over a meal. Uh, and from the beginning we had this sort of thing that we talked about, love God, love neighbor. And so for me the high of this experience was being able to go and visit with our neighbor uh, in a tangible way. Uh, and to actually have that reciprocated back, the hospitality that we received from them was an incredible high for me. Um, and I know that's something that's going to, to sit with me uh, uh, for a long time, the idea of loving God and loving neighbor through hospitality. So, so that's my high, and, and then I'll give to Sarah. And you can be here, and then we'll talk about that a little bit Okay. Um, I don't remember what I even wrote yesterday, but... I think my overall time with the girls, I love um, watching them serve each other and serving the youth that they were working with. Um, I love getting together with them every night and hearing about what their high was for the day, what their low was for the day. We would go off on a tangent because somebody would be silly. Um, but those were really my favorite moments, just getting to spend with them and hearing about how they were growing and then getting to see how they were growing. Um, we talked a lot about nonverbal communication because nobody speak, none of us spoke Hungarian, so it was really important that we were smiling and paying attention and nodding and trying to participate. So it was really neat to see them progress throughout the week just with that even. So loved it. Brilliant. Would you do it again? Yep. Yeah, excellent. So maybe next year we'll have some more people wanting to go on. Yeah, indeed. Um, we've in one 
instance, established a great partnership and relationship with our host and with what they're doing. And so there's a possibility to continue that uh, with our young people and as a church to be involved and to, to be partnered is, is a, a strong uh, possibility moving forward. So, so listen, we will have an Exodus uh, morning where the girls will come and we will have a chat through some more. That's what we were there doing uh, and how that fits into a bigger framework. Um, but we wanted to just say thank you for your support. We had 60 folks following the WhatsApp page that we had set up with pictures and updates. Uh, every every day uh, and we could tell that we were loved on and supported from here uh, and so thank you to you all for, for that and that, that support uh, and we will then have a, uh, a thing in a few weeks where we talk more in depth about the trip. Brilliant, okay so if you want to know any more speak to Ryan, Ryan and Sarah and, and young Sarah's here somewhere this morning too and so is Grace. You look forward to speaking to people afterwards aren't you We're over the tea and coffees? Brilliant. Ask them about Frankfurters. Frankfurters? Oh, very good. Brian's going to just read to us now um, from God's Word. Do you want me to tell you? Confirmation. So, um, confirmation is coming up uh, right about sort of middle of September. We're going to start confirmation classes. But it might be twofold because confirmation is really for our teenagers, uh, for those who want to explore more about their faith. And then we do a series of studies and Bible studies, and then the bishop comes and confirms them, and the bishop's coming in with them. And perhaps you're wanting to know what this is about, or you're curious, you're very welcome as well, because there are actually more and more adults being confirmed now in the Church of Ireland. And if you want to know really, I suppose, in a nutshell, it's like a testimony. It's like you standing up in front of the church, and, and that's what it is. So if you want to be part of that, again, speak to Ryan or myself. Our Bible reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, in verse 24. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus heard him in search of Jesus, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs he performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill, food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval to do the works of God that he requires. Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ryan, for bringing us uh, God's word. Uh, just before we stand together to sing Cornerstone, that's going to be our offer to him. Uh, just to remind people as well that uh, most of you, some of you will remember Sharon and Sharon Hillis used to worship with us here uh, just before COVID, probably, and he would have been back a few times afterwards before moving to Spain. So sadly, Sheridan passed away last week in Spain and it will be, uh, there will be a service of Thanksgiving here tomorrow at, at half past three. So the family uh, have, 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 have asked uh, that the church are very welcome uh, to join with them and join with them afterwards uh, for some refreshment. So Sheridan, that's Sheridan's service. will be stand now and, and receive uh, your tithes and offerings as we worship God by singing uh, Christ Alone Cornerstone. Will you please stand?
few short words with you uh, on the passages of Scripture that we have heard this morning. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for those words, Lord, that the weak are made strong. And we listen, Lord, to your word. We just pray that our hearts and our minds may be open to receive from you. Amen. Amen. I always love this slide because the sermon sounds very formal, doesn't it? And this is where everybody gets their sweet slide on the passages of Scripture uh, that you have heard. And I've really thought about today as being endurance. I, I've loved the Olympics. Has everybody watched some of the Olympics apart from the opening ceremony? No? Here from our house Olympics. All right. And I know some of you have been. Some of you have even appeared in the, in, in the Irish news. There are other more unionist papers available if you're twitching. Well, Irish Times, I'm sorry, Irish Times, that's even worse, wasn't it? But the Irish Times, all right. But uh, anyway, uh, it, it's been a wonderful thing to watch. And do you think somebody like me could do the 100 metres? No. no. Slowly. I could, yes, yeah, slowly. But I would have to train an awful lot. When somebody used to say to me about the 100 metres, I used to think it was the 100 metre range we were going to, which was a fantastic place to be. But anyway, I couldn't do it because I would need to train. I would need to eat, and probably about a quarter of the age would help. All right. But to train for something like that is so important. And did anybody watch? I think I could beat Reese McCann on any day. She's spinning around on a horse. That'd be fine. Who's the last time I was a horse that broke my ankle? But still, but not a pummel horse. Anybody see Reese performing last yeah. night? Yes. Yeah. Good Lord, good Nards guy, uh, Regent went to Regent, so other schools are also available, so maybe just not as good. But anyway, it was great celebration because all that training, all that physical pain and discomfort paid off when they received their medals, when they received their awards. And, and that whole word, endurance, it means the ability to withstand hardship or adversity, especially the ability to sustain a prolonged, stressful effort. Here's the thing about that, about that title. Some of us endure church. And when I use that term endure, I mean it's a negative side of it. Some of us go through endurance with church. We go week in, week out. We don't really want to be there. We hope it's going to get better. But we stay and we stay and we stay and we stay in the hope that something will change. And I'm not just chatting about a church, this church, I'm chatting about the universal church because we can see the universe. We saw all those disturbances over these past few days and I was actually encouraged when churches got together and they came out with a statement that talked about accepting people for who they are, accepting people who are slightly different than us, but realizing that God's love is for everybody. And we as Christians are called to share that love. We are called to are called to endure the things of this earth in a good way so that we might build the kingdom of God. And in this passage of, of, of scripture that was read to us, we see that Jesus hints at what will build us up, that what will help us to endure the bread of life, to endure life that leads to eternal life. And that's by feeding on who God really is. Now, if you look at me, you know I like a good feed, all right? I love a good meal and good food. But what happens when you go to somewhere just in case they think we're talking about their curry. But anyway, when you go somewhere and the food's shopping, do you go back? No. Depends who's paid the bill, of course. Do you wings and gird about it? Of course you do. You probably don't wings and gird to the, to the people who, who've made it, or if you're really brave, you will. But when you get a bad meal, you're not happy. And I always like to think as, as clergy and, and, and as ministers and as pastors, 
We are really, uh, and Ryan talked about liking puns this morning, about being in hungry and being hungry and hungry and all that sort of stuff, but we of God's word. We are to bring you God's word in a way that sustains you and that it refreshes you and that it builds you up. And if we're not doing it, you should call us out. Don't be leaving us out after this service. But we are called to build you up. Now Jesus had just fed the 5,000. He'd went back across the lake to Capernaum. But that's where Peter's house was. That's where some of the other disciples lived. That's where they used to fish and where they would have settled. And probably he went back to Peter's house and Peter's mother-in-law, if you remember, they were worried when she wasn't well because they wouldn't have got a good feed from her. But they all went back there and the people followed them. And how did you get here? And Jesus says, you want the sign simply because I performed the miracle and because I fed you. But Jesus had spoke to these people and they asked him a question. And listen to the question that they asked in scriptures. He said, when Jesus said, if you seek a sign, you look at Moses and you seek a sign. You see what the people have done and you seek a sign. But they asked him, what must we do that the work of God, of God requires? That is a question. That's a question for each one of us. Our young people, those of you who like to evangelize, what must we do that God requires? And Jesus says, the work of God is that he has sent. And then they asked him, what sign will you give us? Us human beings are fickle creatures, aren't we? We always want the sign. We always want to be entertained. We always want something that is going to direct us in the right way. And Jesus says, they said to him, Our and he gave them bread from heaven. And Jesus said to them that I am the bread of life. So we all want the sign. Who's doing your theory test at the minute or studying? Grace? You know what that sign is? Does anybody here know what that sign is? No, it's not one way. The one way has square edges. Remember that when it comes to your theory test? Straight ahead, you're close. Everything Jesus has given us as a church. Do you guys not know what that sign means? It means you've got a head, only. It means you can only go straight ahead. No, it's not one way. Oh, here we go. Anybody here work for the DOE? So, if you come to... I can't believe I'm on the explain this in church. If you come to a street and there's a head only sign, it means you can only go that direction. It's not a one-way street. No, a one-way street is something different. It's not really. But when you come to those... Grocery. Yes, where's he said it's a head only? I argue with her afterwards. It's one way that way. It's one way that way, that's it. Sometimes that arrow is facing to the left or to the right. That's a directional arrow, really, but like for the sermon, that's a head only. <laughs> I was just about to finish, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, anyway, as a church, this is our sign, okay? Stop arguing, just, just follow it, all right? But ahead only, Jesus is saying to these people, look, don't look around you. Look at the things that are going to last, things that are for eternity. Look at Jesus, look at who he is, and, 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 and let him take complete control of your life. The people ask, what sign will we give? I don't think they argued as much as, as the Jews have, but that we may believe in you. What sign will we give in you? And the boys and girls and, and our young people have this key verse on the coloured in sheet. Does anybody want to tell me what it says on the front of the coloured in sheet? Charlie? I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. That's what Jesus has said to us. Now you know last week I was lamenting over how they go on. 
Okay, so I've used this this morning in my little uh, key verse. Okay, are you going to argue with this slide? What does this slide say? I am the nutty crust of life. No. <laughs> now the bishop, I'm going to get sacked. I am the nutty crust of your heart. Very disruptive this morning. I, I am the bread. Is anybody here for the first time this morning? It's not like this every week, honestly. But you're allowed to come to church and have a laugh, okay? You're allowed to come to church and be refreshed and sustained. I actually thought this was a good slide and it was passed through uh, somebody in our house who thought it was all right. Anyway. I am, will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You see, there's a spiritual around to somebody's house for dinner at half past six. And I said to Rosie, could we not ring them and go around early because I'm starving? <laughs> because you know how it is. When you go without food, or when, like me, because you're supposed to be on a diet and you think about food all the time, you get hungry very easily. I know you've been hungry, pardon the pun, Ryan, but you can get hungry very easily. And spiritually, it's the of God, you will get hungry. You will be malnourished, will falter. But here in Bali Lesson this morning, you are being offered the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Having Jesus in our life gives us endurance, gives us the ability to stand up to the world around us, gives us the ability to continue whenever everything around us seems to be caving in. It gives us the ability to live life and to live life to the full. We go back to that question this morning. What sign do you need from God? You get distracted. What? That Jesus wants you to go ahead, straight ahead with him. He wants his church to go straight ahead with him. Don't look back, but look forward. Let Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, fill every part of your life. Let us pray. For the, for the, for the laughter, Lord, and the joy, Lord, that we have felt, Lord, that you will nourish us, and that we will have that endurance that comes from knowing that you are in complete control. Sometimes, Lord, we are facing uh, Lord, situations, Lord, where, where we're just completely bewildered by it, Lord. We don't understand why these things are happening, Lord. But we must trust in you. Lord, you are the bread of life. And so, Lord, as we as a church have our heads bowed in this place this morning, we pray for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you will fill each one of us, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest. Lord, that you will give us that drive, Lord, and that passion, Lord, just to see people one for you. Lord, to see people, Lord, who are running around in all different directions, Lord, focus on who experience the abundant life spirit within them. And Lord, as we pray for that, Lord, we just want to remember those, Lord, who are ill. Lord, we just pray that, Lord, for Elmer, Lord, we just pray for continued healing in her body. Lord, just for those, Lord, who are here, even this morning in church, Lord, as they, as they struggle in their lives. Lord, we pray for those who mourn. And Lord, indeed, we, 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 we think of Sheridan's family. Lord, we pray for tomorrow, Lord, that they may receive the comfort of from you. Lord, as we pray for those who are ill, Lord, and sick, Lord, we pray for the world. Lord, we pray for peace in the Middle East. Lord, I just pray for protection, Lord, over those who continue to serve, bring, uh, Lord, enemies together. Lord, may their, may their negotiations, Lord, may their efforts, Lord, be uh, just, just not, Lord, uh, just taken away. Lord, may they know, Lord, your presence. Lord, we just pray for this land of ours, Lord. When we just see these different protests yesterday, Lord, we just 
ask for an outpouring of the love. And so, Lord, we just take a moment in this place to pray for our own situation, Lord, to pray for our own loved ones. Lord, whatever may be troubling us right now, Lord, we lay it at your feet. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. in the week ahead, you will bless us, that you will give us the opportunities, Lord, to share that love that you have poured into our hearts with those around us. And so we sum up all our prayers in those beautiful words that you have taught us as we say together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. For us from evil forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, in just a moment we're going to stand and sing Be Thy Thy Vision. It's a wonderful uh, hymn to close with as we just we'll close with this lovely hymn, Be Thy Thy Vision.